Hey guys, uh, my name is Greg Gervais and I am the senior pastor of Awakening Church as well as the director for Rig Nation in USA. And so today we are going on AMP, that's called Assembling and Mobilizing Prophets, but that means assembling and mobilizing every believer to walk like Jesus, to hear from God and do the works that Jesus did. And today we are so excited. We have this amazing guest today, Joshua Kelly. Um, he is uh, just a uh, an amazing uh, artist, really uh, an ama amazing anointed artist who just goes on the street, sees miracles everywhere he goes, power and love. Um, I'm not going to say all day long, but pretty much everywhere he goes, um, makes intensely amazing videos. And uh, but mostly we want we want to talk about the life of Jesus. So welcome, Joshua, to the show. Thank you, man. So it's, it's an honor to be on here, man. It's really, yeah. really good. Yeah. Just before, I'm sorry, I should have said this, but you guys like and share this, please. Uh, and if, if you can help me out, if you can go to uh, visible slash or dash Jesus dot org and uh, visit his website. And then also, hey, Alicia Roshika, if you guys can give and sow into this ministry, he's really changing a lot of things for Jesus. And in a pioneer, I guess, uh, right now in his own right, as he's making ways for Jesus and just doing a whole lot for the kingdom. So we want to we want to honor him today uh, just by sewing into his ministry. So thank you guys for joining us. And uh, Josh, uh, Joshua, do you like Joshua or Josh or what, Josh. what's your preference? And Josh is fine. Um, Josh. Joshua, I feel like sometimes I'm getting in trouble. So <laughs> <laughs> Joshua, you know, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I, I Good. I go by half my name too. Uh, I do, but uh, uh, cool. Well, do you want to give us Joshua just to kind of uh, introduce us to who you are, a little bit of your story, and how Joshua is now, how you are, who you are, and now you're like Superman. And before, um, no, but I mean, I mean that in a powerful way, in an honoring way that God's using in this powerful way so with visible Jesus. So if you could just kind of reverse the tapes and give us a glimpse into how you became you. Absolutely. Um, I'm Josh Kelly. I'm the founder of Visible Jesus. We're a ministry that wants every person, every nation to see Jesus. That's why the name is Visible Jesus. And we know that the world's searching for Jesus, whether they know it or not. So I think that through media, through evangelism, we can reach nations and we can show people who Jesus is his character so that they can see him, they can fall in love with him and be completely awestruck by him. Um, I just started uh, a video production company called Jolly Productions, which funds the ministry for the most part now. Uh, so it's just been an incredible ride. 2016 is when I really met the Lord and had an encounter with him. And it was one of those encounters that I didn't have like the heavens open and Jesus show up in my room. But as I looked in the mirror after I'd asked him, Lord, I've been living this life that is empty. I uh, say that I believe in you. I was the typical hypocritical Christian that didn't walk in any power, didn't walk in any love, um, really was a fruitless tree. Wow. And so I had this encounter where I looked in the mirror and he highlighted every aspect of my life that I never surrendered to him. And at that moment, I knew that I had to give it all to him. I had to give everything that it was going to cost me everything. And these things in my life weren't necessarily all bad things, but there were some good things that I was holding on to. That's like, oh, this is my personality. I have to be this. And I had to let it go. I said, Lord, you have to be my personality. You have to be my reactions, my actions, my belief. You have to be everything. And the day after I went and got baptized and it was like I got an exoskeleton, uh, you know, those bugs that leave little shells on posts. I yeah. felt like I left that behind in the water. And uh, wow. the day after that same weekend, I ended up walking out into the streets and I said, Lord, I believe that this is going to be it. I, I want to live the life that I read the disciples live. I want to see you work. Um, I want to see you do everything. And I walked out onto the street, started praying with people. 
first day out saw blind eyes open deaf ears open people were getting rid of their crutches people were just getting free from everything and wow. it was it was incredible and it was the start of my journey and i call 2017 my faith building season because 2017 i saw over 300 miracles wow. that i couldn't explain you know so oh, it's like lord god you've done it you can do it you'll keep doing it it's nothing it's not about me you know and i found out the more super that you want to be <laughs> or you have to yield to him so that he can be super through you <laughs> to totally totally that's yeah. awesome <clears throat> so awesome well you you had mentioned something how um you went through a period of like surrendering specifically some stuff in your mind. Could you kind of give us kind of how that changed the fabric of who you are and allow Jesus to begin to function through you? Uh, just the breakdown, because I meet a lot of people who are like what you said, I think they have a desire to move for God and they think they've, they've prayed this sinner's prayer. And, um, but there's all this stuff in their mind that maybe they never thought they had to deal with or their heart. So could you maybe kind of just uh, unfold that a little bit? Absolutely. Um, as I mentioned before, I was living that hypocritical life and it was like, re I knew everything was real. I knew Jesus was real. I knew his, the Bible was real. I knew God was real. I knew it was factual. Um, but I read the Bible as if it was a National Geographic magazine. So I felt like there was this distance between me and God. And I had to have the communion because in Luke 24, it says that Jesus opened their eyes and they knew him. I was like, right. Lord, I need you to open my eyes so that I can say that I know you and not just know about all the great things that you've done. And whenever he showed me things to surrender, it was, it was just a lot of stuff. I realized that there were <clears throat> areas of bitterness that I was holding on to because when I was little, I didn't know my dad. So I felt rejected. So wow. I had to deal with these, I had to deal with these rejection issues by giving them over to Jesus. Um, I had some pride issues and I, I would say that a lot of times we all still have pride issues, <laughs> but uh, especially come uh, political season. <laughs> um, <laughs> Triggered. <laughs> I had to let go of, pride the good stuff my like i was saying my personality knowing who i am in myself knowing that okay i'm a i like jokes i uh, i like sarcasm i like these things but giving those all over to the lord because i was using them in a unhealthy way because i was operating in the flesh so anytime i use a gift that's given to me from god in the flesh then i'm abusing the gift wow. wow so i was tired of abusing gifts i said lord i don't want to abuse everything that you've given me by holding on to it myself you want me to surrender it all i have to give it all to you and that was it's easier said than done because we're like, well, it's easy to say that you, you surrender everything, but what does that actually look like? And it's really digging in and say, I have to care less about the things that I've been given in my hands. And I have to care more about the hands that I'm giving my stuff to. Wow. Wow. So did you have any place? This is kind of this is really awesome. I appreciate your your transparency. So did you have anything like you, I know it's bad to say this, but I know a lot of times I'm talking with people and uh, as they're kind of growing with Jesus, they're hitting some of the obstacles. Like you just said, you didn't know, maybe like giving up in, uh, you know, sarcasm or insecurity or pride. Um, did you have anything where you had to like, where you like didn't want to give it up and it took you a while to kind of like be convinced to give it up? Or was it all like you came to the, like Jesus kind of brought you to that moment where you were already ready to deal with it? Or was it kind of uh, was there any arguments that you had to overcome or how did that happen? At that point, when the Lord showed those things to me, I was 
I was already kind of ready to just be done with life. Um, I'd been, I had been hit a, hit a big depression. Um, okay. Angry at myself because I was, when I ran away from the church when I was younger, it was because of all the hypocrisy that I saw. And when I came back to the church in 2008 and got sucked into the religious, you know, <laughs> mindset, right. It, it made me struggle and strive even more to be a better person, but I couldn't do it on my own. So I had been working for almost eight years. Wow. Trying to do everything on my own. to when the Lord said to surrender, I was already so exhausted. Wow. That the the best option was to give everything over so that I could be burden free. You know, right. and I think right. that's the way to look at it is if I'm carrying something, even if it's a gift or if I'm carrying an accusation from the enemy or if I'm carrying a traumatic experience, something, it, whatever I'm carrying, I was never meant to carry any of it. As sure. Christians, as creation, we were never meant to carry any burdens. Right. We chose to carry heavy burdens in the garden when we decided to know everything that God knows. Uh, yeah. We were never created to know everything that God knows. We were just created to know him who is everything, wow. who knows everything. Wow, and, that's, I love that you just said that. That's awesome. Yeah. And instead, wow. we chose to know everything that he knows or we tried because we still don't understand it all, but we listen to the enemy. Wow. Well, do you want to be like God? And we're like, oh yeah, I want to be like God, not knowing that we are like him as long as we are with him. Wow. You know? And so wow. we decided let's be wow. like God without him. Wow. And that's where the fall came. And so as soon as we chose that, we put all these burdens on ourselves. And that's why it's so important that in Matthew, when Jesus hmm. says, Hey, I know that you're tired and heavy burden because from the foundations of the earth, I was crucified for for you so that you didn't have to carry these burdens. Yet yeah. you chose them. So since you chose them, I know that you're tired. I know that you're heavy burdened, but come to me and I'll give you rest because my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Why is his yoke easy and his burden is light? Because he has finished it all. There is <laughs> nothing else to do. He's resting. <laughs> wow. You know, so I That's think when we think of it that way, it's like everything that I carry, if I start feeling a certain way and emotions are good, I'm not saying emotions are bad, but if I start feeling sad and then I let this sad feeling influence everything that I'm doing. And next thing you know, three weeks later, I'm still in sweatpants eating chocolate on a couch. <laughs> I've noticed that I've been burdened with something that I was never meant to be burdened with. And I, and I neglected giving it to God. Wow, that's and powerful. When we neglect to give things to God, to give our life to God, then we neglect Him. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. So, so could you explain, like, you have a, an amazing heart for the lost. I'm sure you do with believers, right, too, right? But what's, yeah. what, 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 like, how do you see, I don't know, how do you, how do you say this? How do you, how do you see the lost people? How do you see, uh, like when you're walking around, what is your literal uh, heart as you're walking around? And how could someone maybe start to start seeing the lost? Because I don't, you seem like you reach a lot of lost people. It just like your heart's glued to, I love your heart. And so I remember there was a point where I didn't even know there was lost people in the world. Like I was stuck in that religious thing you were saying. Yeah. I was going to church. And I'm like, yeah, I'm a, I'm a good boy. You know, I'm in a drama team. This is awesome. I had no clue and nor did I even care about lost people because I was like this religious guy. And uh, what was, how, how could you maybe uh, like you could show us a little glimpse of what you feel? How, how did it start to happen? Or if it was just when you released yourself and then uh, how could someone maybe start moving in that direction? Um, for me, I didn't have an ounce of compassion still for people, though I was operating in miracles. <laughs> um, awesome. I loved Jesus and I loved his miracles. And I started going after saying, well, I'm doing these things for Jesus. So I must be really in tune with him, which wasn't the case. I, it was a quick a uh, quick downslope of chasing the gifts over the giver. And I had to go back to Jesus with it. 
And I asked him, I said, Lord, I have to know what it is that drives you to have walked this earth for wretched people like us. Hmm. Like, what is what is that driving factor? And I realized that when I was reading through the Gospels, more times than none, it said, and he was moved with compassion. Wow. So I said, Lord, I need your compassion. And so I just locked up with him and I became um, lovesick for him to where I would spend hours in prayer just to know him because I couldn't know. You can't teach compassion. You know, you can't go through a textbook and say, well, this is what <laughs> compassion is. This is what you should look for. It's not that you have to go to compassion himself. And so that he can bleed over on you very com the very compassion that he is. And it wasn't until then that I realized I, I have to love people as he loves people because it's really him living, living in me, through me and for me. So I have to yield to the very emotions that he feels for people. And yeah, compassion. That's it, man. I, I feel like that's, that's when I really stuff really started clicking and it became less about what miracle is about to happen and became more about meeting this person where they're at and actually finding out their story and spending time with them and not just doing a drive by Jesus loves you, you know, <laughs> be healed in Jesus name. All right, we'll see you later. But, getting to know the person before I even ask to pray with them about their physical need or any need at all. And so that was, I think that was a turning point for me, really finding out what compassion is. Okay. And when I found out compassion, it drove me to go out further into the streets and to really meet people where they're at. Okay. And be free to be interrupted, you know, for whatever the day, whatever the day holds, if I'm, going to Home Depot and I feel something in my heart when I look at them and I feel really drawn to them, I have to go and speak to them. And sometimes it never is a direct word of, hey, that person has, you know, this, that, or the other, or this person's going through that. But I feel that compassion is to say, hey man, how are you doing? And totally. not keep it just small talk and keep passing by. It's like really try to get to know that person in the five or 10 minutes and uh, see what relationship builds from there and what the Lord can do in whatever time you um, yield to him for, you know? Right. So if, if you don't mind, just because there's a lot of people who don't, you know, they, it's kind of weird with the way the church is, but they don't like the hypocrisy of the church. That was one of my deals. Mm -hmm. I remember I got, you know, on, like the Holy spirit changed my life, whatever on this, this meeting, but I couldn't even hardly go to Bible college because it seemed like they could care less about Jesus. It was kind of hypocritical. Right. And I was like, I almost, I'm sorry, I almost didn't like Jesus people or church people. Even when I was on the most fire, my favorite time was just walking the streets with people. And, you know, and just like I would be ministering to homeless people and certain things like that. But how do you, because, you know, you would mention something like that. How do you, how do you like, and obviously I'm partially, I'm over that, right? Even though it's still my one of my favorite things to do. I'm not over that. Like I'm saying I'm perfect, but I'm saying, how would you, how would you kind of advise someone to start? Cause I, I see a lot of people who can't follow Jesus because of people who say they're with Jesus. You know what I'm saying? There's people, I, I don't know how, how to say, I probably met so many people not like you, but before you, right? right? They had a heart for Jesus, but they just couldn't get over these hypocritical people. They couldn't like the system and how it's so um, jacked up. So how did you and how do you still, because I know you probably minister and even ministries that you probably even disagree with, right? As a Absolutely. itinerant. So how do you, how do you compartment, compartmentalize, but how do you push past that and still do what you do? I had, I have to realize continuously that I love Jesus because of Jesus and not because of anybody else. I have to realize that I want to obey his commission to go into all the world and preach the gospel because it's 
what he would do and it's what he wants to do whether or not somebody else agrees with it or you know i can't i can't live my life as a christian based on how other people live their lives as a christian um i have That's to live awesome. i have to live my life as a christian the way god's calling me to and i will only know that if as if i'm in the closet with him if i'm in the secret place with him um so yeah there because i deal with a lot and sometimes i was joking around with a friend the other day it's like man you know this is just you know the flesh in me sometimes but man sometimes i really would just love to give some people the finger <laughs> <laughs> you know and be like you know what if this is the way you want it whatever i'm out of here you know um but I, I just had to come to realize that you know everybody's on their own journey with jesus and if I can focus on just my journey with Jesus, no matter how people are doing, whether they're excelling in great measure or whether they're misrepresenting him in any way, I can't let that be an offense to my relationship with him. Now, I can take that as an offense to him and with people are misrepresenting and say, hey, I feel like you're misrepresenting who Jesus is. Um, because of this action or that action or, you know, this, that or the other. But I can't allow that to affect my relationship at all. Because once I start allowing other people's actions to affect my relationship with Jesus, then I have put them a little higher than Jesus. And I'm thinking, OK, well, my relationship is based on how they act and what they do and my belief system is based on what they do and how they act instead of my personal relationship you know it's awesome so that's so how did you kind of I, again i hate asking i mean hopefully you don't hate me asking these questions but this is really this is really interesting um because i haven't uh, you know there's everyone has a different story and i've never heard it like this so this is perfect this is kind of like a journey discovery as i'm listening to you it's really powerful um uh so how, how did you get like when when you're saying that you just said some remarkable things that were just you can tell that jesus spoke them to you but i love jesus for jesus sake and not because of anyone else and i respond to jesus because of jesus and not because of anyone else and kind of like you obey jesus because of jesus and not because of anyone else but how how did you get there and i know you you probably you know, I know you kind of said it in a roundabout way, but how, like you just, how is a person supposed to adapt that? I think it, it comes down to, do you really love him? You know, and, hmm. and not with just a, a, a generic love, like, oh yeah, I love Jesus, but will you give up, will you give up everything, you know, for Jesus? Will you sacrifice that extra hour of sleep and then go into the closet just to minister to his feet. You know, mm. it's what will you do? Will you, will you ever steal away time in a busy day to go sit in a bathroom for five minutes just to tell him that you love him? Wow. Just to adore him and tell him that he's glorious, you know? And I think when we get to this spot, you know, it talks about the, in song of Solomon, probably, my favorite book of the Bible. And it talks about how the Shulamite bride says she was lovesick. She was wounded by his love, meaning that when she loved him so much that it hurt her to be away from him, you know? And I think when we get to this, this place to where all of a sudden, you know, that extra episode on Netflix or that extra hour of podcast or extra this or that we really start seeing our time and we're like you know what i'm spending five hours a day on useless stuff let wow. me push that into the only thing that matters jesus and, yeah and i'm telling you i think every everything comes from the comes from jesus and all of our revelation comes from us being at the feet at his yeah ministering to his feet um because it's it's going low before him that he exalts us to so we can see his face and if we can't get low if we can't steal away time 
if we're okay with just praying over our food and listening to the word on Sunday, then we're going to be spiritually dry. It's like the Shulamite bride. She leaves the king two times. The first time she leaves and she's comfortable with knowing that she's his and she leaves him. Now, Jesus never goes anywhere. If if we feel absent from him, it's because we've turned and left and we've turned our focus somewhere else because we'll always find him in the garden. That's, and, that's awesome. <laughs> that's awesome. So when the Shulamite bride leaves, she talks about how he's coming to see her and he's coming over the hills. And as he comes, the flowers are blooming and the, the sun is shining and everything is perfect. And she's in her home and he comes and peeks through the windows of her soul and it excites her. And he says, come away with me. And she says, no. Wow. Because she was comfortable knowing that he is chasing her, knowing that she is his and knowing that she is satisfied in all these things. And so when he leaves, the story goes and says it became dark she began to be afraid and trembled during the night to where she left the house and she ran out into the darkness. Oh, where's my beloved? Wow. Wow. Yeah. That's awesome. You know, this is what I've told people and some people, they, I know it's going to sound bad, but they get mad at me. Um, I'll be like, Hey, you know, they're like, how do you do what you do? How do you get the boldness you have? And I like, I am not, I have to be honest, I'm not a huge creative person, right? Like I have the creator on the inside. So I try to be, I'm inspired, right? Yeah. But like for all the boldness, like you're saying, even when you you love people and whatever it may be, it's only because of worship. Like, I'll be honest, when I, I can read the Bible and I read the Bible and it strengthens me, it makes me holy and pure, but it's the worship when I worship God, like I've told people, even in some of our discipleship classes, we'll say, you know, we'll, we'll have people, they've never worshiped God without their, you know, Caleb or something else on just them and Jesus. Right. And I'll say there's such a huge power in that. So what you're saying is like a lot of the source and identity and even personal um, solid fortitude is the right word I'm looking for is just from that secret place. Is that what you're kind of saying? Absolutely. Everything, everything stems from the secret place. Um, that's, awesome. that's, you know, the fruit can only be fruit if it is pollinated, if the flower is pollinated. And if I'm not in the secret place with the Lord, he can't pollinate me for me to bear fruit. Wow. If I'm not in his presence, then his presence is not on me to bear fruit. Um, so if I ever leave the secret place, then it just you, you, you can actually feel the the dryness of the wilderness. But if you're in his presence, then when you're leaning on him, then you won't even know that you're in a wilderness. If that makes Amen. sense. Amen. Totally. I've, I, it's funny you say, cause I feel that like sometimes I'll, I'll just get, you know, like you, you, you're doing a uh, video on the side and, and, you know, sometimes we have to do some kind of work. I do, uh, you know, home investment stuff on the side, but and I'll be hitting on our Macedonia churches though. <laughs> <laughs> we are. The no. <laughs> Lord Jesus. And, in, in mid uh, midway, please remember to go to the link below and, uh, you know, go in, <laughs> go and so into this man of God. Honestly, uh, you know, there's I promise you, you know, there's a statistic and they said that um, I, I should keep that up. Um, they said that it, it, it would only take three billion dollars to send every believer who wants to go. To, to the nations of the world that haven't been reached yet. And then the end would come. No, I'm just kidding. But I mean, like, that's what the Bible says, right? But literally, they th there's a statistic saying that literally there's all these different, like, I'm part of a few ministries like this, and there's just people waiting, like, to, you know, plant churches overseas. We like going overseas and stuff. But um, anyways, all that to say, it's kind of funny, but you should give. 
uh, today, you know, with uh, Josh here. He's really, really, really super awesome soil. And I promise you it's some serious seed. So with all that said, um, worship, you know, is a huge deal. So um, as we're, we're talking about this, is there, is it just worship or, or what was the thing, I guess, you said you started to immediately go out and share your faith with lost people and see, not share your faith only, but like see miracles and signs and wonders. Was there something that helped you get the boldness? Like, I know we just talked about worship and that could be it, but um, was there something else or a, a mind shift or something else that helped you get over maybe a lack of boldness into going what you're doing and especially expecting miracles? You know, you know, you know, like some people have like, here's a track boldness, but like to right. go all in and to say, hey, man, like you said, that's what I do sometimes. Uh, I'll just say, hey, are you OK? And get to know someone. And then, you know, God bubbles up and there's a miracle or something like that. But like, how do you get to that place? To where you go all in. I think before I really understood what worship was, early part, the end of 2016, early part of 2017, um, I, I had zeal that I wanted to see it. It was like it wasn't. It wasn't like, okay, yo, that'd be really cool if I saw that. But I had that zeal that says I I want to see God in this way. And I had been for almost three years wondering and, you know, almost bashing the church because it wasn't in the church. But yeah, I still wasn't work, you know, in it either. But I had that zeal that's like, I need to see this. I have to see this. I want to see these things. God, I want to see you move. And I think that's really what kind of fueled the boldness was to, to say, look, I believe that you can do it. So I'm going to pray for it. And it's not me that's going to heal anybody because I know that I'm a wretched person without you. So, Lord, you have to do it. And I'm just going to make the request, you know. And wow. so it really I alleviated all pressure from me. Like I don't ha I didn't have any feeling that I had to perform or that I had to say something or that I had to do something just perfect. I alleviated all that by saying, Lord, you're God and I want to see you do this. So I'm going to be that vessel and I'm just going to pray for crazy, crazy things, you know. And once I started seeing it, I started to learn worship because I would I didn't know how to contain everything that I was seeing. I was so excited. I was celebrating. I'm like, how do I even celebrate this? And it, I found it was celebrating what he's done through worship <laughs> so it's incredible. It's incredible. worship and right now i know that that prayer and worship and communion with him is is the only thing and through that you learn and you get you get extra boldness you know it's like the more you're with him the less that you care about anything else and um, boldness comes easy. Now there's still some times that I, I, I don't want to approach people because I still have that feeling of or right, what's going to happen. And it's not uncertainty that I'm doing something right or fear of like, Oh, what are they, what are they going to do? Or what are they going to say? It's more of just that unknowing, you know, like, Lord, right. are you to, is this going to be the time that you move miraculously or is this going to be the time that I get punched in the face? <laughs> <laughs> you know, so it, it's like one or the other. So I'm still sometimes a little nervous depending on who I'm approaching. <laughs> wow. Wow. Yeah. I, I, I that's awesome. Cause I know that uh, I, I, when we're tra helping to train people, they're like, well, what do you say? What's the perfect thing to do? And they have all these analytical mindsets of how to get in there. And to me, it's kind of like, I feel like you said, I feel a little bit of pressure sometimes, um, but I I don't feel the fear. It's just kind of like a an uneasiness of the situation or whatever. But anyways, um, anyways, uh, so what I always say is just like, there is no right way to talk to a stranger because no matter what, they're like, what is this guy doing? Like sometimes when we approach people, they're like, they think we're selling drugs. It, like some people don't know how to take us. So I, I always say like, there's just, there is no perfect way. You can't fail. 
Uh, yeah. But what's one of the biggest ways you kind of, you, you do this probably more prolifically than most people. So how do you, how do you train people to, to kind of blow it off, get your mind at the door? <laughs> and I know it's, it's worship, but is there like some kind of a mentality that you kind of get into or you train people to think about to get over that, that bridge? I hire actors that will reject them every single time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just, <laughs> uh, just kidding. That's awesome. I um, love you. You're so awesome. Okay. Oh, no, I, you know, <laughs> I base people in the sense of I love it when people do reject the people that I'm taking out with me because it brings those questions of how do I – like what happens now? And I'm like, well, they said no. What happens normally when people tell you no? <laughs> you know, like, hey, can I buy this? No. Okay, you move on. You know, it's like right. it's, it's right. that same thing. Um, because you're gonna get you're gonna get rejected. You know, it's you if you go and knock on somebody's door these days, seven times out of ten, nobody's gonna be answering, and you can see them walking around the house through their window. <laughs> You know, um, and it's the same thing on the streets. You you go and talk to somebody, and you'll just start with the, "Hey man, how you doing?" or "Hey, how are you? How are you? What's what's going on?" And they'll just look at you and just keep walking. You're like, "All right, whatever," you know. Wow. And so I think the I think that mindset of, you know, Jesus said that we'd be rejected, you know. So if we go ahead and accept the rejection of the world. And we count it as a joy to be rejected by the world. Then when they reject us, the only way we can do is celebrate and say, all right, we were just rejected. So next, let's let's go to the next person, because really it comes down to if the person's if the person's heart is ready, you know, um, you can either try to break down a stony heart and chase people down the road, you know, running after them like, hey, I'm just going to tell you something. Um, right. Or you can just take it as you leave it. And if, and if people don't actually stop and take time to talk with you, or if soon as you mention Jesus, they put a wall up and start to go, it's okay because their, their heart's just stony. Their heart wasn't ready for it. Um, so you can't, you can't blame yourself for that. And right. we don't have, you know, x-ray vision that can see hearts that are really stony, hearts that are ready to receive Jesus, um, because that would make it easy to not trust Jesus in the moment. You know, right. every person you come in contact with is another opportunity to just trust Jesus in that conversation and right. let him work. And if he doesn't, if he doesn't move, Jesus passed by a lot of people in, in the Bible. Yeah. You know, people left in multitudes not receiving him. He was, you know, bumping elbows with everybody before the one lady who needed him to heal her grabbed his robe, you know? Yeah. Uh, so I think we put we put more emphasis on being rejected and what it's going to do to us and what it's going to do to our feelings when our only emphasis when we're out on the streets is to proclaim the kingdom of God and to yield so that Jesus can manifest how he sees fit. And, totally. and he may see fit that you just saying, Hey, how are you doing to somebody? And they blow you off may actually change their day. Cause they're like, dang, somebody actually took the time to say, Hey, which totally. is unheard of these days. Cause everybody's head buds in iPhone, TikTok <laughs> as they're walking. I almost hit a guy today. <laughs> wow. sidewalk and we're on a busy road and so i'm going to turn into lowe's and this dude keeps walking doesn't even look to see anything and i'm i'm like lord should i hit the gas or hit the brakes <laughs> <laughs> you know wow so you know but, you said something and I, I wanted to pick up on it but it's like there there is this weird um performance edge almost no matter what you do in the world or even in the church. And I think what you just said, like, I, I'm always trying to look for something, but 
Hey, we're, we're hitting a lot of ducks here, I guess, tonight. But I felt like I wanted to ask you this, but there's you're not performance at all, which is rare, right? It's, it's rare. And so what I always see, though, is the exact same thing you said. Like, I'm not aware of failing at all. And that doesn't mean I'm perfect. I just don't understand it. And I don't know how to describe it. So when I'm hearing you talk, though, it just kind of revelated in my spirit that like it's almost the only reason to be introspective, to go outward is because of fear of performance, a lack of performance. Would you agree with that? Like there's so much we taught the church like you have to perform, you have to get it perfect. If they don't come to church, that wasn't an effective evangelism strategy, you know, or whatever it may be. There's no just love allowed. It's got to look like something. It's got to produce something. I don't know if you want to kind of wait in on that. No, it's, I don't think when we, when we feel like we have to perform, it's, and we're scared if we don't, it's the whole question, well, what if it doesn't happen? You know, and I always tell people that I'm talk, talking to and I'm, and they're like, well, what if I pray for them and it doesn't happen? Well, what if you pray for them and it does happen? It does happen. You know, and if it doesn't happen, does that discredit who God is? No, not at all. You know, so I think that, if we can just start to care less of whether something does or doesn't happen, whether it's a miracle or, Oh, if do, am I going to get this word right? You know, if I give this guy a word, is it going to be accurate? Um, if we can just leave it, I've given some of the most wacky words to people. <laughs> Me too. And I'm thinking of, and I'm like, Lord, this is really wacky. And they're, and I see the people receiving it and the Lord's confirming it through them. Yeah, this is really wacky. <laughs> and I'm like, all right, never mind. Hey, if that didn't resonate, don't take it. You know, I'm still learning to, to hear, you know? And <laughs> so it's the same thing with miracles. I've prayed for five that I know of people who have amputated limbs and I haven't seen one grow back yet. I right. know one day I will, but that's not going to just because it didn't happen or whatever is not going to stop me from praying for another one. You know, I remember the first person I prayed for who was dead came to life. I've not had the opportunity to pray for another dead person. If it comes, I'm going to pray for a dead person. Right. Um, you know, it's like I can't we can't live this life of well, what if God doesn't do it? Because we know that he's faithful. And I have to understand that I'm not on God's time zone. I'm still living in this linear realm of time. And God could have already blessed that person that I prayed with, with that miracle. It just may be 10 years from now on our time zone, you know, if that makes sense. Yeah. And I think what you, it's, it's kind of crazy, but it's like all these questions of like what happens if it doesn't happen or whatever is still just really an insecurity um, that we're supposed to perform or produce something rather than like what you're just like someone asked me once. They're like, well, well, isn't it worse if I pray for them and they don't get better? And I'm like, no, I, because love never fails. Right. Like what you said is most people I've prayed for. And even if something didn't happen, they were just so grateful that there was someone in the, in the, literally it's the same thing all the time. They say, I wish there was more people out there like you, like the world wouldn't be like this. And that's what I believe is the win. The fact that we just represent Jesus, right? Yeah, absolutely. I think, I think we do it to ourselves because I hear all the time, well, Jesus, everybody that Jesus prayed for, he healed all the time. And I'm like, well, yeah, but then there's that scripture that says Jesus left his hometown because he could not perform any miracles. Yeah, well, they were, yeah, because they, they, they were like, who's this guy? He's just a carpenter or whatever, right? He wasn't 10 for 10 every time he prayed for somebody. You know, he was he was zero for zero or zero for 10 in his hometown. <laughs> You know, so it's like if we if we can just wrap our minds around it where it's like, man, it 
everything doesn't have to be perfect. We just have to be willing. And when we're willing, the Lord's going, the more we're willing to be used, the more totally. he will use us. And it's just like <laughs> this kingdom principle. The more, yeah. you give, the more you receive so that you can give more, not just so that you can get, get and keep the more you are willing to be used and actually step out in faith, the more that he will use you, the more that you do with the talents to actually bring an increase to the kingdom instead of burying it in the dirt, he's going to give you more. He's going to let you steward more because he can trust you with more. Yeah, totally. I I say, I kind of say it almost like supply and demand, you know, like with a business, it's the same thing with heaven. Like, honestly, some people are like, don't you get dried out doing this? I'm like, man, I get so full when I'm on the street praying for people. I don't know how to say like God starts moving like crazy. The more I go, I see God move and it spills over even into our ministry. And it's really the the, the seasons when I'm going less that yeah. I feel drier. Even if I'm worshiping, I still feel drier in the church, you know? So it's kind of like a supply and demand. The more I'm like, you just said, uh, the more I'm really going, it, it, it gives. So that's awesome. This is like a, I always, uh, I don't know how to say this. What's, what's that guy? Malcolm Gladwell. Do you, 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 do you know that guy? I don't think so. Oh, he's just, he wrote on David and Goliath and he just said it's perspectives, everything. And he was saying how David saw a big forehead, really a five head instead of a regular forehead. And he said a lot of Christians are looking at or uh, looking at the wrong thing. And a lot of people are looking at the wrong thing and how, you know, this whole book was perspective pretty much. But I, I just, you know, I gleaned some stuff. Uh, but like what you're saying, it's not like how much we can perform. It's just how much we can really obey, right? Is we just cross the line to bring the light of Jesus. That's powerful. Exactly. And, you know, our obedience comes from how much we love him. You know, if we love him, we'll never want to do anything that would be considered disobedient. You know, if we look at it in parents' terms, like my kids can do a lot of things wrong, (laughs) but it doesn't change my love for them, you know, but when, but when I ask them to do something and they do it, you know, it's like, I know, I know that they love me and it's, it's hard to reciprocate because they're only five and two right now. So I can tell on their end, it's hard to like really understand what it means to give love. Right. Uh, But they just, but that's, what's beautiful is like, they just know that I love them and they know that there are times when I ask them to do something, they don't do it. They understand, Oh, you know what? I didn't, I didn't actually obey dad in a sense. Right. And so it just gives them a little more unction to, I want to be more, I want to be more obedient. And so I think the more that you really can give that love back to God, um, obedience becomes easy. It becomes, you know, second nature in a sense to where when the Lord speaks, you, you say when the Lord does, you do. And you talk about, Jesus and his and the father, he goes, I only see or only speak what I hear the father speak. I only do what I hear the father do or see the father do. Throughout his entire walk, he was talking about how his him and his relationship was with the father, the un, the union, the unity in it. And he's really relaying going, hey, if you are in love with me, if you are in love with God, you will it will just be easy for you to do what I tell you to do. It'll be right, easy for right, you right, to right. Say what I what I say. And so yeah, I think I think when we get when we get into our own head and we start doing this whole performance thing, we become more disobedient because we start to doubt, what did the Lord really say? And it's like, well, here we go again. I mean, did the Lord really say it's from the very beginning, you know? <laughs> right. Right. That's that's awesome, man. That's the wow. enemy. That's the enemy's favorite words to use to every soul on this earth. Well, did the Lord really say? You I, know? I promise no matter how far I go, like we'll be doing some kind of building loan or we just, you know, I know it sounds crazy, but even for us to do a conference recently, is just a new step of faith. And you're midway through and, and like the devil's like, did he re- do you really think God's going to show up? Do you really think this is going to work out? So it's It never stops. It's the same stupid sentence. <laughs> more bait in his tackle box, just the one. Right, right, 
Right. No, totally. That's awesome. Well, good stuff, man. Um, you know, before it's, we're, I don't want to take a, a whole night of it, but uh, this has been supernatural and awesome. Is there anything that comes from the Josh that um, you wish you could kind of encourage believers or stir up people uh, just to really partake or implement in their life? Absolutely. Um, I have, I do these things called mornings of prayer, mornings of stillness, and it really teaches small groups of people how to, what it looks like to pray in the secret place, you know, what it looks like to commune with God without asking him for anything, without petitioning wow. for anything and without even having anything on, but just some, you know, s simple pads for, for worship. Um, and sitting there for, uh, I don't know, just 30, 45 minutes uh, in stillness, complete wow. stillness, just letting him, speak to you and then whatever he speaks to you pray it back to him and give it back to him because we whatever he gives us we're not even worthy enough to hold it or and we're not even capable to do anything with whatever he gives us mm -hmm. so we have to give it back to him so that he can actually do with it that he wants to do with it through us if that makes sense yeah yeah so, i've been teaching these things and why I started teaching these things is because in the Song of Solomon, it's probably the greatest book when it comes to evangelism. If you want to learn what evangelism is, read the Song of Solomon because it goes through the Shulamite bride leaving the king twice before she comes back to him on the third time. And then when it's her time to leave again, wow. where she would normally wow. leave, her exact response is this, come away, my lover. And let's show the forgotten places in the the dry fields this redeeming love. Wow. That's evangelism 101. Wow. God, please come with me so that we can show the world this love that is between us. Yes, God. And that coming away is so strong in that book that it says the daughters of Jerusalem oh. cried out to the Shulamite bride saying, where is she? When will she return? When is she going to return to us so that we can look upon her face? And as she's coming and they say, here you are. Oh my goodness. We want to look upon you. The Shulamite bride is like, well, why do you want to look upon me? Cause she knows exactly where she started in the fields. Mm -hmm. with the audacity just to say, Oh, <laughs> would he just kiss me with the kisses of his mouth? You know? Right. And here she is now the daughters of Jerusalem are begging to see her. And she's like, why do you want to see me? And the yeah. reason they want to see her is because that she's been with the king. And before, yeah. that, and before she can answer them, and she says, well, why do you want to see me? Before they can answer her, the king says, because you dance gracefully as if you've danced with angels. Wow. Wow. That whole thing just talks about evangelism. There's a relationship. And in this relationship, we cry out to our king, come away with me so that we can show this redeeming love. And as I'm coming out of the wilderness, that it says that when they saw the bride coming out of the wilderness, she was leaning on her beloved. Wow. Meaning when she was coming out of the wilderness, she had no clue that she was even in the wilderness because she had been leaning on him the whole time. Wow. Wow. That's awesome. And so evangelism is relationship, relationship, relationship. <laughs> you know? And so it's the, it's that man It's it's knowing that I can't go forward unless he comes with me or if he's gone before me, I can't talk to people who want to see the King because in his presence, we get the glory on us and people can see something different about you. And they're like, what is it? What is it that's different about you? You know? Yeah. And before we can even answer, the Lord shows up and answers for us. So it just tells us that we ask him, please come out on the streets with us. And when we meet people on the streets, when they ask us questions, he answers for us. And then when they see us coming, they see us leaning on him as our strength. Wow. 
Wow. That's incredible. Like this is, I've never heard anyone explain it so definitively. And this is just super, like, I know that it's, it's supernatural. I'm just joking. I sound like I'm Sid Roth or something, <laughs> but I, I mean, it. I've never heard anyone like I, again, I've, it's only been like about 10 people we've interviewed, but you are literally like, this is pure Jesus. And I can tell like everything I've watched and even just talked with you earlier, you just exemplify, exude, I should say, Jesus. And so this is just awesome, man. This is really empowering us just to really get a grip on how to move forward. And it's so bad, right? Like I have to say this, there's so many people that are uh, analytical and they're like, well, just, do you, do you got a 10 step program like just just give me just just tell me the five things i gotta say and you're like jesus and they're like it can't just be jesus it can't just be jesus like no i don't know what it is that jesus is not enough in the church anymore and i'm always just saying you know so but i love how you broke i've never heard it that uh explicitly not in a weird way but just how the song of solomon is you know how you're saying with evangelism that was just beautiful that was awesome man yeah, it's uh, like I wow. said, it's my favorite. It's my favorite book. Um, I'm actually working on a. I forget. I forget how to say it. it. Pretty much a thoughts on Song of Song, Song of Songs, um, book. Okay. So, um, I'm working on that. Pretty much just my as we as I'm going through the book, my thoughts on it, verses and stuff like that. Um, so I'm hoping that helps a lot of people to understand this the simplicity of jesus um he does everything he did everything he's doing everything and he will do everything and totally he can't be uh he can't be i was i am and i am to come if we don't you know let him be everything <laughs> do right everything right know that he will do everything so that's amazing. i think that's it man we we challenge and we defy the very statement that he makes when he says, I am the beginning and the end. If we don't even believe for him to be our beginning and our end. Wow. Wow. That's so rich. Wow. That's so. amazing. Well, thank you. Well, um, so just before we, we kind of cut out of here, would you mind just kind of praying uh, maybe just the revelation of intimacy, really, yeah. that is just so profound. It's still kind of hitting my gut in a good way. So if you wouldn't mind just kind of praying that, I don't know how to impart that other than like, just do it. You know what I'm saying? Just spend time, like get to know Jesus. You don't need us, you know, but uh, if you wouldn't mind just kind of praying that in and then, uh, you know, uh, we'll we'll dismiss everyone. So oh, Absolutely. So Lord, we just we just thank you for who you are. I glorify you. I praise you. I worship you. You have to be everything in my life because I am nothing without you. So Lord, I just thank you for all those who are watching, all those who will watch, and I just release the revelation that you have given me on relationship, on intimacy, on prayer. Lord, let people be able to just get into your presence with such ease that you would shut down the analytics of prayer, that you would just let the people understand, that you would open their eyes so that they will know you. So, Lord, that is my prayer for everyone watching that they have an experience with you where you open their eyes to the most inner parts of their life, to the most inner parts of their mind and that you would silence the distractions so that they can see you. Lord, give them the revelation that they would dim down all unnecessary light so that your light will shine above all. Lord, I just release the peace, the zeal to seek you and to sit with you in absolute stillness so that we can hear you speak. Just like John, before he wrote the book, 
of revelation. He was in the spirit on your day. And it was only in that stillness that he heard your voice and saw you. So, Lord, let us be still. Quiet our hearts. And let us see you so that we can know you in such a way that we will not leave without you. We will not do anything without you and we'll let you answer for us in all things. And I just release the miraculous in people's lives right now. Lord, that you would touch the hands and the lips and the feet of each person, that they will see your glory manifest in power and in love, but most importantly, in compassion. Let your eyes of fire infiltrate their eyes so that their eyes are filled with compassion just as yours is for lost souls and for the broken. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, it's been an amazing honor, Josh. You're just a, uh, a true, a true God, man. I promise you that was awesome. Thank you. Thank you, man. It's been, like I said, it's an honor just being able to get on here and go live with people, man. It's, it's always fun. It's just rich. It's just rich. So thank you. Um, guys, just uh, remember to like and share this. Please go to visible-jesus.org to sow into uh, Josh. There's just, I, I just, uh, you know, it's my hope one day that legitimate people like Josh would be able to be free to like just follow Jesus. You know, you know what I'm saying? Uh, just fully compensated for the work that he does and who he is. I know there's a lot of people who get paid for doing nothing, <laughs> you know, in Jesus. Seriously, a lot of religious stuff. And I'm like, God, the real, there's sometimes they're hurting or no, I'm not saying you're hurting. But if you don't mind, guys, just go there and just sow a seed for him. He's just an amazing uh, man of God. Like and share this again. And if you're re rewatching this, uh, his prayer was just as uh, pointed toward you as everyone else. Uh, and uh, please follow him. It's Joshua Kelly. Is that is that your Facebook or yeah. Joshua Kelly on Facebook, um, Visible Jesus on YouTube and Instagram? OK. And if you need any videos made that are super legit, he also does that as well because he is the best videographer. So love you guys. Thank you for joining us. Thank you again, Josh. You're amazing. Thanks, Greg. I appreciate you.